We're here with Sarissa Kitts, so room this size manager. First and foremost, Bank, how do you say your full name? My full name? Yeah. It's very long. I, I go really at it. Mine is Constantino Garcia, so uh, All right. it's long too, so go it's ahead. Tian Chai Pisit Utinan. Yeah, that's the full name. First and foremost, I want to get your story of how you met this uh, young man, uh -huh. Rungbisai. Right. How did it happen? So he came to our gym as a sparring partner first, and mm -hmm. uh, he was helping one of our boxers to spar. And, uh, and he was very determined, he was training very hard. Uh, we knew a bit of his story and he stayed there I think for a month. And then uh, yeah, everybody in the gym was, was saying that this guy like trained so hard and he has like the heart and he, he, he just like put everything in the gym. And, um, and yeah, we decided to sign him in. And, uh, what stood out to you in his and when you saw him? Whoa! Because obviously, when you sign a fighter, you're not just gonna sign anyone. Right. What made you want to sign him? I think at first it's, it's all mental, right? So I will not take credit for it, but because everybody in the gym was saying the same thing, everybody in the gym was saying that he was training really hard. He ran the extra mile without anyone tell, telling him to do. He was training the extra rounds with, without anybody telling him to do it. So it was all about determination. And um, back then he was, I think his record was like five, five fights and then he lost three out of the five fights. He won out only one. Um, yeah, but then we, we, we saw that he, he, is, he was willing to work really hard and went, to the, went the extra mile. So yeah, we decided to give him a shot. What was his reaction when you told him, we're gonna give you a shot, we're gonna sign you, and let's hope for the best. What did, what did he say? He was happy, he was happy, um, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was. And, um, when did you realize that you had a special fighter? Because there comes a moment where, where people see a fighter and they're like, we have something special here. Yeah. We have to protect it, but we have something special. Yeah. When did you, when did that moment happen for you? What, what fight? I think it's like not one moment, uh, but there are like series of moments. Mm -hmm. um, the first one that I rem remember was the first time that we matched him up with against like a very experienced Indonesian fighter, mm -hmm. a Filipino, I don't remember, but um, that the opponent was better than him, more experienced than him, and we were like really worried about what, how he is going to perform. And he just knocked that guy out like cold in the first few rounds, and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> the, 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 I was not expecting that, so that was the first first one. Um, and then he knocked everybody out, right? Right after we signed him, he got 17 straight wins all by knockout. And then after that, we we gave him a, a world title shot, and um, he was fighting against Yota Sato. And Yota Sato was like number one in the division. Back then he was the UBC champion from Japan, number one in the division. And then he just destroyed Sato like in like for the whole fight. And he won by knockout in the eighth round. And it was like such a special performance. It, it was a great fight. If you have never seen it, you might want to check it as well. How do people see it if they want to see that fight, Banks? I think it's on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> I think it's to, on YouTube. What do you have to type in? Sisaki Yota Sato, I think, I think, yeah, I have to go back and check as well. Okay, and um, following the Chocolatito fight, um, talk about that process because that came really fast and it was supposed to be a Madison, it was at uh, this garden. Yeah. And what were your thoughts going into that fight? Because there must be a lot going against the number one fighter, pound for pound at the time. So what were you guys thinking at that time? Because I know you believed in him, but right. what was his thought process, if you remember it? Uh, so our team were very excited. And um, so he lost his world title against Carlos Corradas in Mexico City. And we were waiting for three years until he, he got like another shot at the, at the world title against Chocolatito. Um, and as a team, we were trying really hard to give him another shot. Um, and uh, I was working very closely with the UBC, and then they were they were very helpful, especially President Mauricio Sulaiman. And I also got a chance to meet with Peter Nielsen of HBO, and uh, we were talking about it. And I was um, I was talking to him about telling him about Sisaket uh, Sorum Risai, showing him him the video, um, and then like with the help of every everybody, we we got this shot. And in terms of of the fight. Um, we were very confident 
because me personally and all the team have seen Chocolatito for I think like maybe a decade since he was a teenager uh, training in Japan in Taiken Gym. I, I, I saw him as a teenager training, training in Japan. I, I saw his uh, first few fights when he was fighting in Japan, um, when he was winning the first world title against Niida uh, in Japan. So we knew his, his style really well. And we knew Sisuke really well, and um, we knew that it would be a great, great fight. Um, for me, uh, for that fight, I, I, I thought it was 50-50. I was very confident that he would push it through, and, and I think that's, that's what, what was in our head back then. And then um, immediately following that fight, you guys won, you guys dethroned the champ, but a lot of people were still like, um, no, Choco won. And I think following the fight, which was the rematch, on fight week, I still clearly remember a lot of uh, reporters um, disrespecting you guys, saying you guys lost the fight, um, um, there was headbutts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, making excuses. And I remember in one occasion, this reporter asked you, uh, "How does it feel that you guys are going to lose?" And you said, "I'm not going to ask my fighter that." He's like, "I'm not going to ask him that." He's like, "Ask another question." But you said it very respectfully, saying it like, "Hey, this is the champ. Let's respect the champ." And again, you guys were doubted the rematch. So how did that feel on that week? How did you guys feel? You mean the week of the rematch? Yeah. Before the rematch. Before the rematch. Uh, we were very confident. Okay. We were very confident. Yeah. Like, super confident. Um, and this time he had a full training camp, correct? Yeah, for four months. And uh, yeah, he was training really, really well. And everything was going very well for him during the second Chocolate Tito fight. And we already knew what, uh, how Chocolate Tito fight, and um, we prepared that in the gym. So we were very confident. We were very confident. And then again, uh, how were the nerves in the dressing room? Because obviously the fighter has to be calm and everyone is nervous. How, what was the, um, the feeling, the vibe in the, in the locker room before walking out? Because he said he loved it when people were booing him. Yeah. It was calm. It was calm. And I think that's our style. We, we like to keep it quite uh, silent and uh, calm. Yeah, I was in uh, Estrada's dressing room yesterday to, to check the hand wrapping. And, and they have a different style because I think, I think it's a Mexican style. They have a really like fun a atmosphere. That it was a fun thing to see as well. But um, for us, it was like Zen mode. We pray, we, we, we try to be really calm, and then um, we yeah, mentally go through what he is going to do in the fight. And um, yeah, and then he trained, so yeah. When um, Rungvisai got that knockout over Chocolatito in the rematch, what was your initial reaction? It was crazy, man. It was really crazy. It was, um, it was like a dream come true. It was a dream come true. Um, so my family has been in boxing for like 30 years. And I, I was born in the hospital, but then I stayed in the boxing gym uh, like for my whole life. Mm -hmm. So that, that has been like always our dream. It has been his dream, Sisuke's dream as well. So at that moment, it was, it was hard to explain. It was, it was a dream come true and um, for everyone. Not only for me, not only for him, but for the whole team. And I think for many people in Thailand as well. How did the team celebrate? How did you celebrate? How did Rungvisai celebrate? Because that's a memorable night I'm sure you guys will take to your grave. Uh, I forgot what we did. <laughs> Let me think. But we, yeah, we went to a restaurant, right? Yeah, we, we, we did not do anything so crazy. Yeah. We did not do anything so crazy. Um, we talked to the press, we come back to the hotel, we had like some conference call with the press in Thailand call family, friends, and then we went to a restaurant and have a very relaxing uh, late dinner at like 1 or 2 a.m. and then we come back and watch the video over and over again. And that's how we celebrate. <laughs> and um, how was he received back home? Because it looks like he got a hero's welcome. Yeah. Like the fans were just going crazy over him, which they should because he's a true champion. What was the initial reaction when you guys landed to Thailand? It was great, it was great. There was a big event at the airport. There were like tons and tons of the press and the fans and uh, the atmosphere was really great. And then the special thing um, that happened was that um, 
uh, Sisaket, so Sisaket, his his girlfriend, Sisaket's girlfriend came to the airport, and this is a girlfriend that was that they that was with him since the beginning when, when he had nothing when he had nothing when they were 13 and they moved to bangkok together without anything and um maybe like some of the fans might know the sto his story already he struggled a lot he used to be a trash collector he used to eat trash to survive and uh, his girlfriend was the one who went through everything with him and um, and when we went back to the air, we went back to the Highland. We we landed in the airport in Bangkok. There were like a lot of people, and his girlfriend was there. And the first thing he did, he went on his knee and proposed his girlfriend in front of like tons of cameras. So it, it was quite crazy, and uh, it it went on the news everywhere uh, the next day. So it's uh, not only is it a boxing story, not only is it a Cinderella story, but it's also a love story. A love story, man. Yes, it is also a love story. Did he tell you he was going to propose? Did he say that? I, maybe he mentioned to someone in the team briefly, but he did not say that he would do it at the airport. Right? So we were surprised as well. I was surprised. I was like, yeah, walking behind him. I did not know what was going on, and people were like, <laughs> surprised. Right? There, there was an excitement reaction. What do you guys expect when you guys land to Thailand this time? Because I'm sure it's going to be bigger. Yeah, it'll be... I don't know what to expect, but it'll be fun. It'll be great. It'll be great atmosphere again. Um, it's always great to go back and see the support and uh, feel the support from all the fans and all the press. And um, we are looking forward to that. And um, what did uh, Rungbisai tell you after this fight against Gaia Strata? Did, you, did he tell you anything? Because, uh, like I said, they were like one of the very few people that was has been there since the beginning and believed in him since the beginning. Uh, yeah, I think it's the whole team. Right? It's, it's not me. We, we have a team that were together for a long time. And uh, what did he say? Uh, it was nothing special. We talked about the fight and went through the fight for each of the round we were talking to him about his decision to go forward in the 12th round oh, talk, talk about that because that was crazy that was crazy that was crazy and um the 12th uh, round 12th round right the round 12 um yeah like it was it was almost it, it, it felt like a movie to me right i was sitting there people were yelling so loudly and then I and then he was not doing like super good. He w well, he wasn't following you guys' rules. He was trading. He was trading, and then I was yelling to him that he should not trade anymore. And he he kept on going forward and then keep on trading the punches with Estrada. I almost got insane. But uh, but yeah, he said he could not hear anything because the 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 cheering in the in the arena was so loud. But then he said that he made the decision. Uh, during the break that he will go out there trade with Estrada and give it everything that he got and he did that and and we are very impressed with that and I think a lot of fans were impressed as well so we are very happy that it turned out that way what did you guys tell him after like the the brown ended like why did you do that or did you guys tell him like thank god like nothing happened we were happy I did not like right after that we did not talk about that round immediately we yeah. just um celebrate because we were confident that we won um, the fight so we celebrate and had a good time on the ring now obviously um he's fought here already two times one uh, when he knocked out chocolatito the second time now that he beat estrada two highly quality fighters one he dethroned the pound for pound king yeah. where does he go from here uh, banks because the uh, sky's the limit right uh we don't know yet and we are very excited so I'll, I think in the next few weeks I will sit down with uh, all the parties and um, talk to everybody who, who are involved and who, who supported us from the beginning. So I'll talk to Tom Loeffler, hopefully I'll talk to Peter Nielsen, I'll talk to the UBC and uh, everybody in the team and Sitsuken himself as well and, and see what would be like the best next step for him. But uh, for Sitsuken, he never shoots his fight, he just fight anybody, he is never scared of whoever in, in 115 pounds so I think it'll be exciting time there are like a lot of options that we can look at
Um, obviously, Tom mentioned that he wants to make the rematch in the fall, meaning like around September time in L.A. Um, do you guys, do you, would you like that idea here in L.A., in, um, in Vegas, or, or you just guys have to be patient and negotiate? I think we'll take our time now, but um, we're not against the idea. I, I think uh, it was a great fight. Uh Ket did really well, Estrada did really well. Seems like a lot of fans liked the fight. So yeah, we're not against the idea, but um, it has been only one day. So I think we'll take our time and uh, look through what are out there and then take it from there. How many text messages did, and uh, emails, Facebooks did you get after the fight? So many, so many. I still could not um, reply everyone. I will be working on that now. So, yeah, if somebody texts me and did not reply, I will do that very soon. <laughs> Sorry for that. But it is crazy. And, and thank you everyone for their support. For CSAGET especially, not, not only f uh, not, not for me, but f for all the support to, to the team and, and to CSAK especially. We are very grateful for the support. We, we try really hard and um, it always feel great to, to get the support and feel the support from, from everyone. And uh, what do you tell all the fans? Because he made a lot of fans last night, including myself, including the editor of Ring. So many people were talking about him nonstop and still talking to him, talking about him right now as we speak. What do you tell those fans that uh, are new uh, Rung Besai fans as far as watching him fight? They're going to come to see him and support him. Uh, thank you. I think that's, that's what I would like to say, right? because we work really hard as a team. Since again, we work really hard. And... Um, it's good. It's, it feels really good to, to have fans behind us, and uh, because yeah, it, it I think it's a reward of, of, of our hard works, and, and we really appreciate all the fans and all the support. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, uh, in Thai, can you tell anything to the Thai fans? Because I know there were there were a, there were a lot there yesterday. Uh, there were a lot watching back home. Yeah. What do you tell the Thai fans in Thai? In Thai. Yeah, in Thai. So, I want to thank the fans, 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 and 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 fans, ซึ่งซึ่งเป็นอะไรที่เรารู้สึกดีแล้วก็ภาคภูมิใจแล้วก็ดีใจมากๆที่เห็นแฟนมวยทุกคนที่เป็นคนไทยมาโบกธงชาติไทยด้วยกันอะไรครับที่ที่สนามเป็นอะไรที่รู้สึกพิเศษสําหรับมากๆแล้วก็แฟนๆชาวไทยทุกคนที่อยู่ประเทศไทยที่ที่ที่ดูแล้วก็ให้กําลังใจทั้งทุกทางครับให้กําลังใจแต่ทั้งทางโซเชียลมีเดียหรือว่าให้กําลังใจโดยการดูไฟนี้แล้วก็ไฟอื่นๆของพี่แหลมนะครับเพราะว่ากำลังใจทุกอันเนี่ยสำคัญจริงๆสำหรับทีมของเราแล้วก็สำหรับพี่แหลมเพราะว่าทุกก้าวที่เราที่เราก้าวที่ผ่านมาแล้วก็ก้าวต่อไปนะครับมันมันก็มันไม่ง่ายแล้วมันก็เหนื่อยแต่ว่าพวกเราทำได้แล้วโดยเฉพาะพี่แหลมตั้งใจซ้อมตั้งใจต่อยได้ส่วนหนึ่งและส่วนหลักๆก,ก็เพราะกำลังใจแล้วแฟนๆทุกคนก็เขาอยากจะขอบคุณมากจริงๆครับที่เป็นส่วนหนึ่งในความสําเร็จของพวกเราแล้วก็เราสัญญาว่าจะทําหน้าที่ให้ดีที่สุดตลอดไปครับผมขอบคุณครับ Thank you sir appreciate your time and uh, any last message any uh, any where fans can reach you because I'm sure they want to thank you too for bringing him to the states Yeah uh, so you have Twitter or something? Yeah we, we are quite new on on the social media but um, I think the, the best place is uh, to follow Instagram, Sisake Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's his name. I think uh, it's Sisake underscore official. That's his Instagram account. I'll post it in, in this video for sure. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, Banks. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.